From Wood TV, this is a Target 8 investigation. A 10-year mystery. The search for Jessica. 10 years ago, Jessica Herringer was working what would end up being her final shift at a Norton Shores gas station. She would soon vanish, never to be found. A decade later, her family refuses to believe the conclusions reached by investigators and a jury that the young mom was the first victim of serial killer Jeffrey Willis. To this day, they wonder whether Jessica might still be alive. Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker has covered this case from the beginning. He sat down with the lead detective and with Willis, convicted not only in Harrigan's murder, but in the 2014 murder of a jogger, Rebecca Bletch. Ken. For the first time tonight, the lead detective is revealing where he believes Jeffrey Willis buried Jessica Herringa. It's a short drive from Norton Shores to this part of the Manistee National Forest in Oceana County. At 10 minutes after one in the morning on April 28th, 2013, two days after Jessica Herringa disappeared from her job, phone towers picked up Willis's cell phone headed that way. I think he went out into some area that he is well familiar with, um, and uh, he buried Jessica out there somewhere. Phone records show Willis returned to the same area in the months after Jessica's disappearance in June and August of 2013. Why is he out there? He's a hunter and he's an avid, avid snowmobiler. It wasn't hunting season, and we weren't having snow in June and August. I believe somewhere along the line, he was, he was either uh, uh, visiting, visiting or, or burying her even better. In 2017, after Willis's arrest and after review of his phone records, police searched this part of the Manistee National Forest. Cadaver dogs, helicopters, even infrared cameras at night. A half a dozen fruitless searches that were never made public. And I'm telling you there, Ken, out there when we were walking the terrain and using the dogs, you're, it, it, the terrain is like this, and it's wooded, uh, ground is uneven. You could be walking in 15 feet from you, something could be buried. And you, you, it's that, that tough. I always say the only one that really, probably really can tell us when it comes down to it is gonna be Jeffrey Willis. I'll be talking to him tomorrow, so I'll ask. Go ahead. I, I he, am actually, if, if I he, am. If he, if he would tell you, that'd be great. Oh, I'm trying to reach uh, Jeffrey Willis. Hello. Hello. Jeffrey Willis speaking. Muskegon 911, where is your emergency? Um, I don't know if it's emergency. Jessica no, Herringa, the 25-year-old mother of a three-year-old boy, was working alone the night of April 26, 2013. It's very suspicious why there's nobody here. At the Exxon gas station on East Sternberg Road. I got all kinds of information. In a phone interview from Cotton Correctional Facility in Jackson, where he is serving two life sentences without parole, Willis admitted he had stopped at that Exxon station before, even earlier that day. Um, had you ever seen Jessica hearing it before? At the before the night she disappeared, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. i seen her, uh, I, I had gone into that store one time with uh, with the guy I work with. The guy I work with, I rode, I rode to work with him. He stopped there at the gas station because uh, he said there was a hot girl there. And that would be... So I stopped there, I stopped there and got some... Um, well, before the night that uh, that she disappeared, I was in there that night too. But I had I didn't know who she was. I never met her. I think that was uh, around like December, sometime. And Norton Shores Detective Michael Kasher, the first detective at the scene, almost immediately suspected the worst, and that was long before he focused on Willis. Well, you see all her stuff there, including her cigarettes and her and her lighter, which was nicely. Uh, stacked, and then there the they looked like she was pulling out the drawer to start counting. You know, there's a lot of money there, uh, all the change, everything, everything was in place, like she was cleaning up. Their fears grew with the discovery out back, the cover to a laser sight of a gun, batteries to the laser sight, and a smudged drop or two of Jessica's blood. You're starting to go, okay, uh, she's not here, place is left open, it's not in the robbery. Um, you know, there was no struggle inside. Did it happen out here? You start seeing a little bit of blood. We got a cover to a, a laser sight. Um, so the red flags start 
adding up. Eyewitnesses told police they saw a suspicious silver minivan behind the station that night. We just have to keep going and find her. Jessica's family held vigils next to the gas station, passed out flyers. Even if you don't think it's important, it may be. It made may public be pleas for help. Tip. Just days after the disappearance, a tip came in. I think it was tip 257. That led them to Willis. But a quick police interview and a check of his recently vacuumed silver minivan provided no answers. Despite more than 2,000 tips, dozens of searches, and a task force that at one point grew to 45 officers, the investigation sputtered. We've been together five years. They focused for a time on Dakota Quail Dyer, Jessica's live-in boyfriend and the father of her three-year-old son. But he had an alibi and nothing to gain from her death. He was always on board. Every time I called him, every time I needed him, every time we had something, he was there. Dakota declined to be interviewed for this story, saying he was trying to move on with his life. He's married now and says he often visits the son he shared with Jessica. Their son is now 13 and being raised by Jessica's sister. They turned down a road. Three years to the month after Jessica disappeared, a break. A 16-year-old girl escaped a man who had picked her up along the road. She said he had a gun, pointed it at her as she jumped from his van and ran. A silver minivan. That led detectives back to Willis into what the State Court of Appeals later called, quote, untainted evidence that Willis kidnapped and killed Jessica Herringa. And even stronger evidence that he had shot and killed Rebecca Bletch in 2014 while she was out jogging near her home. A stolen gun with a broken laser. What police described as a rape kit, including sex toys and restraint in his van. Ballistics tied the gun to Bletch's murder. And police found her DNA on a sex toy and a glove in his van. And then there was the evidence on his computer. Files labeled VIX, short for victims, with the initials of Rebecca Bletch and Jessica Lynn Herringa. The JLH file held a photo of Jessica. Kenny had some really dark videos, pornographic, and they were all the same type of thing as I think uh, the prosecutor pointed out. You know, there were uh, abduction, rape, torture, murder. And he had 10, 12,000 videos on his computer. Also among the evidence tying him to Herringa, his computer password made up of her initials and the date police believed he killed her. J4L27H13. But Willis has an explanation for all of it. The J, he says, was for his first name. Four represented how many brothers he has. L is for the names of his father and grandfather, both Lawrence. The 27 was the age that my dad uh, or my grandpa was, or my dad was when I was born, and when my grandpa was when my dad was born. And 27 is my favorite number. Well, three is my favorite number, 27 is three times three, right? So 27 is a big number for me. Uh, and then uh, CJ. H, H, H uh, the H anyway. for Herringa, H. Yeah, yeah. well, the, no. Well, uh, no, that's what they say. H was for, for Herringa. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I know what they said. But, what, what, did the that's, H, that's, what did the H stand for? There was J4, see, there's Jeff, four brothers. I don't remember. As for the porn on his computer, I mean, how do you explain that? I don't. I'm not going to explain it. It's porn. That's all it was. Okay, but it's pretty violent. I mean, it was, you know, talking about... Some of it was. They didn't have a lot. But they said that he had thousands, tens of thousands of that. Bull there might have been a hundred on there. But there are some that they say is pretty close to what you were convicted no, of doing. No, there, no, no, there's not. They found one video in there that was called the jogger that would have matched what they said. Right. Happened in the Jessica, or in the, uh, the Rebecca Bledge case. One video. None of the rest of them did. Yeah, but one video, so, in one video, that's, that's, I mean, that's what? pretty, I mean, that's I could go on your, uh, listen, I could go, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting upset here. This is stupid. He claims that crooked cops and ballistics experts concocted evidence. And Bletch's DNA, that he says is a mistake by an incompetent state police lab scientist. I'm sure you realize that most people watching this and hearing what you have to say are going to just think you're full of sh Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Why don't you help the hearing of family by telling them... What am where, I supposed to do? By telling them where Jessica's body is. Oh, uh, I knew you were going to... I knew you were going to... I'm not even going to answer that. I told you already. You already know the answer to that. So, 
I knew that that's what this phone call was for. I told everybody here, I said, if he says that at the beginning, I'm hanging up on him. So I'm not going to answer that. If you have anything else to ask, you know. Yeah, I think I'm, anything but that. I'm pretty much done. I think so you are too. Jessica's family declined to be interviewed for this story. Her mom still maintains the Help Find Jessica Herring of Facebook page. No Jessica, no justice, it reads. In a text exchange with Target 8, Jessica's sister Samantha wrote, quote, I don't think Jeffrey Willis is guilty of killing Jess. She is still out there. I wish someone would report that she is no longer being looked for, whether she is alive or dead. My mom and myself think she needs to be looked for, and the case reopened and looked into. The Herringer family doesn't believe that Jeff Willis did it. They're not even sure she's dead. Right. Casher, the former lead detective, is now second in command at Hope College's campus safety office. On the charge of felony murder, it's a sentence of the court. He says he had two goals in Jessica's case. Of life in prison without parole. Catch the killer and find her. And half of it was completed. Um, a major half, but the other half isn't. So you're, you're, there's a void. There's does, a big void. Does that, I mean, do you lose sleep over that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I... Um, I mean, I don't go around telling everybody about it anymore because it's 10 years. In 10 years, things fade off. You know, Ken, I mean, you're on to the news, next news. I mean, it's not the only murder that ever happened. It's not the only incident that's ever happened. But for me, yeah, I, 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 I think about it every day. So frustrating, Ken. Yeah. Great story. Talk about everyone would like to see closure. In this case, obviously, but Willis continues to appeal, but he's running out of time. Yeah, he's kind of holding all the cards, right? I mean, but he has appealed to the State Court of Appeals. He's been shot down both times. The U.S. or the State Supreme Court has denied any appeals. So I think it's going to be, I, there still could be some appeals in the future. But, you know, I think the police are hoping once that's done, maybe. If he had no, you know, way out of prison, maybe he would talk. But they're kind of doubtful. Yeah, 10 years. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Thank Ken Colker, you. much more on this story. Again, online, and if you have any information that can help bring Jessica's family closure, you can call the Norton Shores Police Department or Silent Observer. Those numbers are on your screen right now and over at woodtv.com. We'll be right back. <laughs>